Want the best way to shop online? Click kccars.com. Want thousands of vehicles at the lowest prices? Click kccars.com. For McCarthy's brand new Chevys, Toyotas, Nissans, Hyundais, and certified and quality pre-owned vehicles all in one place. Over 1,400 new cars and trucks and 500 pre-owned all at your fingertips. Click kccars.com for the McCarthy Auto Group with over 2,000 new and pre-owned vehicles from the ease of your computer, tablet, or phone 24-7. Log on today. kccars.com. Welcome back to Racing Boys. I'm Scott Trey, along with Kirk Elliott. Joining us now on the show is a very good friend of the Racing Boys, a personal friend of mine. I love it when I get out to his neck of the woods. Unfortunately, I have been out there for a couple of years. Gary Selsey joins us now, four-time NHRA champion. Gary, how you doing, bud? I'm doing great, boys. How are you? Doing well, doing well. And uh, let me say right off the bat, um, really impressed with your work on television this weekend, bud. Was that a lot of fun for you? You know what? I, I, I'll tell you what. I've had a lot of people compliment me, and I thought I'd get hammered, but um, that TV stuff is hard to do. <laughs> and, and what was really, especially with a guy of my intelligence, <laughs> right? We went. We had to go way out of the box. But Mike Dunn and I have always been good friends, even when we raced against each other. Mike is just—I don't know why. It's probably not good on his part, but we think a lot alike, and we we see things a lot alike. And I'm going to tell you, he is very, very sharp. He's you know, he's built cars, he's done a lot of things, and he's very intelligent. And Dave Reese, who absolutely loves sprint car racing, so there's a little right. um, little thing in common that we have, um, have, have been friends with him for a long time. Safety in sprint car racing, you know, we saw Tony Stewart in his press conference earlier this week, and he's expected back behind the wheel of a car in February. Of course, he's a two-time Chili Bowl champion. He raced a lot in sprint cars in 2013. Uh, your thoughts about uh, where we're headed with sprint car safety, because we've got a lot of guys hurt. What? And, uh, you know, we lost Jason Leffler. Uh, just uh, where are we going with oh, this? I was going to say, and especially on the heels of the, all the safety uh, modifications to the cars that we see in Funny Car and Top Fuel, I mean, you guys have really moved forward here in the last couple of years. It's time to maybe do that in sprint car, you're thinking. Well, I'm telling you, I was uh, pretty much a big mouth uh, about safety and drag racing, and I'm about to become one in sprint car racing. I, um, the problem I see, uh, different from NHRA or NASCAR or any of these other ones, is we don't really have a national sanctioning body other than the world of outlaws. And we, NHRA drag racing may be 10 years behind NASCAR, but I'm telling you, sprint car is 50 years behind that. Yeah. Um, and it really bothers me as a parent, um, as a car owner, um, as a friend to a lot of these guys, there's no real rule of tubing thickness that I see being enforced. Nobody's checking anything. Um, some of the racetracks we go to, we found in drag racing a long time ago, that openings in a race, racetrack will hurt you. Absolutely. And I don't care what a race car thinks or where you think it's going to go, it's going to find the opening, and I've seen it a million times. Mm -hmm. Now, I know we've got to have an opening to get on the racetrack. I understand that. But, you know... There's certain places with plywood lining and, and chain link fence that I don't know how the insurance companies even let us pull in the gate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, as a father, I can tell you, we went to a couple places, we're not going to pull back in the gate. And I, I'm not going to make any mention of, of names of certain racetracks, but I can tell you that um, Calistoga, I heard, has completely redone that place. They put all new walls up, new fencing all the way around, and I heard it was absolutely amazing last weekend, which I'm very excited about. But... Um, I, there's a couple of things that really bother me, and I talked to Brent Cady about it a little bit because he's a name in the sport. But, you know, here on the West Coast, the NHRA have a, uh, a safety safari that travel to all the events. And they know how to get a guy out of the car. They know what to do in case of a methanol fire. They know what to do in, in the event of everything, and they're on you right away. And I'm going to try to put together a package with some of the car owners out here and even some of the drivers. I'm going to donate a service body if we can get somebody to, to help with a truck or do whatever and try to set up a crew Mm -hmm. uh, with a jaw of the life of everything, with a bunch of EMTs that maybe we can alternate, because, I mean, everybody loves sprint car racing. Right. And see if we can't get a normal crew, um, you know, three or four guys that, that alternate that go to all the King of the West races, and maybe they, they can do some of the 360 shows, and we can maybe start a trend here of doing some things. But, you know, right now I'm, I'm a little scared of guys making cars 30 pounds lighter than they've ever been and bolt and weight where they want to do. And, I mean, let's face it, these cars crash, and they need to be safe. And I think there needs to be a standard, you know, not tomorrow, but, you know, maybe in 2015, 
all chassis have to be certain thickness in certain areas, and and uh, that way you've got something to sell, and we've got time to get rid of it. At least go a direction. Right. Um, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, but I, honestly, I see no direction. And I know that we can't keep hurting drivers, and I know the multimedia, you know, if I if I burp right now, it'll before I hang up the phone, it's going to be all over the whole, the airwaves everywhere, mm-hmm. everybody's going to know about it. And that's a little unfortunate, but I, I think that we do need to know about it. But we need to know what to do to fix the problem. Right. You know. And let me ask you this, Gary, because this has been said, and tradition is what it is. I mean, people lean on the old tradition card a lot, right? They they don't want to change tradition. Is it time to wear because of the the, comp- the the way the drivers' compartments on these cars? They're so confined, as you know from what you raced. These areas are easy to get into because they're so confined. Is it time to maybe even look at redesigning the sprint car? giving a little more room in the driver's compartment? I don't know. I mean, you, well, I, you say that out so. loud, and the traditionalists will slam you. There needs to be a little more reinforcement. Yeah. There needs to be a little bit more room. At least stuff will slow. And let me tell you something. Racing is racing. You're still going to deal with fatality. Absolutely. You're Absolutely. still going to deal with you. I, I'm not beating the drum to say, you know, we can make them to where nobody's going to get ever hurt. Mm-hmm. But, you know, these guys that say that stuff really piss me off. Because let me tell you something. We don't race in T-shirts anymore. We don't race in leather helmets anymore. We have technology, and we, we have... The, the information to know what it takes to make it safe. Now, you know, I don't want to lean on my good friend Tony Stewart or Casey Kane or any of these guys, but, you know, they're kind of big names, and they're kind of advocates. Influence. And, uh, I know when Joey Saldana got hurt, Casey and, and the guys at Aerodyne made a, a carbon Kevlar side panel to make it a little stronger so a car couldn't penetrate the right side. And I'm an odd guy. Let me tell you something. If we can make these cars 20% safer, that's 20% in the right direction. Right, and so let's start going a direction because right now I think we're going backwards. Hmm. Interesting, and just my opinion. Yeah, yeah, because I mean the the statistics of injuries that we've seen here over the last year seem to have gone up. Maybe we've just heard more about it, but it seems to have gone up. They've went down at, at the cup level, and everybody thinks that oh man, everything's safer. But the fact is, the things have continued the same at the grassroots level. Well, let me, let me tell you something. I had about which it happens every time I talk to her, Jeannie Butler. God I bless Jeannie. Right. Next door. Mm-hmm. Um, she was talking to me about tethers on front axles when they were trying them at auction. And I pretty much told her I want one. I don't care if it's a rule or not a rule or whatever. I, I think that's a great idea. She sent me a picture of it, I, and, and it's a very inexpensive item. Mm-hmm. Um, but, man, I don't want to have something going to the crowd. My wife's in the crowd. There's kids in the crowd. We can't hurt our race car drivers. We can't hurt our fans relatively inexpensive. I think it's a brilliant idea. But the seats that they make, and I mean, I'm not, you know, Randy LeJoy is a friend of mine. He does a great job, too. Ultra Shield guys, um, um, they're, they're for, I mean, I, I've got a lot of friends in this industry. Mm-hmm. But Jeannie and I, man, I'm telling you, we talk till our ears bleed. Yeah. And that woman almost gets into tears when she talks about safety, and we talk about Jason Leffler and different things. You know, there's stuff out there to make it better. I don't need a trick set of headers for my buddy at Schoenfeld. It's going to give me five more horsepower. Mm-hmm. I might need to save. Not that I don't need them, but I mean, maybe I need to save a little bit and not buy that header and spend a little bit extra money and buy a damn good seat or a net mm-hmm. for my kid or driver's head. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, or a newer fire suit. I have a fire suit that has holes in it that's, you know, five years old because nobody checks the date on that. I haven't seen anybody check my seatbelts to see how old my seatbelts are or if they're even mounted right. Mm-hmm. You know, these, there's a lot of simple steps that can be taken. Um, you know that, that I understand tradition. I understand all that, but damn it, I, I don't. I don't want to go visit a friend in the hospital. I sure hell don't have time to go to a funeral. You know that that shots wreck here a couple weeks ago. I'm telling you, a couple things could have that could have been a lot worse. If he impacts a concrete wall instead of that guardrail, who knows what we'd be talking about? Because he, that was a violent. Very fast impact to yeah, that. Yeah, let's garden. clarify that happened at Castro uh, Speedway up in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada during a World of Outlaw event up there early in a in a program. But he survived that and he came back and won that. He weekend. won that night. But let me tell yeah. you though, if that guardrail is a concrete wall, we might not be speaking as we are right now. And on top of that, if it's five feet further down the track. He hits the concrete wall right at the fence at the grandstands. Who's to say he doesn't fly up into the grandstands? You know, I, I hate to even think the what ifs, and that's the thing. Nobody but we have to, don't we? About the, yeah, nobody thinks about it. Right. But you're absolutely right. Let me tell you something. Two years ago, 
two or three years ago at at, uh, at the Trophy Cup in Tulare, mm-hmm. Stephen Howard flipped and was a pretty nasty little flip. Went up into the fence, came down, and the wing slider went right into his helm. Mm. Went into his skull. He got 12 stitches in the skull. And I'm telling you, only by the grace of God did that wing slider not go right through his helmet, right through his head, and mm. he would have went to a funeral then. Um, and that very weekend, I got pictures of that helmet, and I sent them to my boys at Simpson. I sent them all around, and I know Bell got them and everything. And Simpson has come out with an F1 rated helmet two years ago. Um, that actually has a nose bridge that they use for drag racing. The forces wearing it because all the drag racers and a lot of these other guys are using Stan Twenty One. But um, I kind of like the American idea, and uh, our good friends uh, Alan Bridges and, and uh, Shane over at Simpson, they came up with a it's a shark style helmet with a bigger window, and it's ca- carbon Kevlar, and it cannot be penetrated. And I'm telling you, my 11 year old has one, and my 16 year old has two of them. Um, not that it's going to help, but guess what it does. It raises the percentage of something going through that helmet getting into their head. So you know what? If it's 5%, 10%, it's, it's whatever that it. number is, I'm a gambling guy. I want that percentage in my favor. Right. So, you know, we have no rules on helmets. I'm sure they don't look and see how old they are. And I've seen a guy flip and the helmet come off because the strap rotted. That You know, when you sweat like hell. I mean, right. there's simple things that you have to do and you get that. And I know you're going to get it. Oh, I don't need to do that. I've done this for 20 years. If you don't like it, don't make a save, then get out. Well, right. let me tell you something. I think only a moron says that, and I'll tell it to anybody right to their face because I'm not afraid of it. I just, I'm a big advocate of safety. You know what You know what I love about you, Gary? I'm, not, I'm, I'm in the shell, and when I come out of it, I'm going to be okay. You, 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 don't, <laughs> you don't have much of a filter on you. That's what I love about <laughs> no, you. No, I don't. That's, once I get going, I got diarrhea mouth, don't I? Man, I, I love that about you, man. We love having you on the show. Thanks for being on with us. We so much appreciate it. You tell Dom I'm rooting for him. You got a big weekend. That you get, Like, what, Friday, we're, Saturday? Uh, Where are you at this weekend? Civil War, Civil War Series uh, tomorrow night in Chico uh, in the 360. <clears throat> then we're going to put the 410 in there, and, and Dom's going to run uh, Friday night, Saturday night in Chico, and then Sunday in Antioch with the World of Outlaws. How about that? So uh, it'll be a good education for him. He always learns a lot, and if we have a good week, maybe we can make the main event one of those races. And you tell Dom I'm rooting for him all the way. I try to keep up with what he's doing on Facebook, and uh, I love your kids, man. You've done a great job, you and your wife, raising those kids. They are just really good. Can't wait to see him down at Tulsa Shoot and the Chili Bay. Oh, and by the way, you know, I always tell everybody, I'm one of only three people that saw you shoot that hole-in-one down there at Sedalia that one year. Oh, you know my that? God. You remember that? Uh, you know what? I needed a witness, and now I know I got one. I'm Nobody the, believes me on that. I was there. I was only one of three. <laughs> so I'm just yes, saying. Sir. So I, I'm, for, oh, I'm, for, I'm, for, I'm forever sure. connected Thank to Gary so Selzy. I, I really appreciate it. I'd love to talk more. And uh, let me know the flack I get from this, this show. All right, buddy. Thanks so much, <laughs> Gary. Right. Love you, brother. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. All right. There he is. That's uh, Gary Selzy. We want to thank him for being on the show. He is a great guy.